Transcendental. That which goes beyond, transcendental is that which goes beyond the senses. It's, it's beyond our sight, it's beyond our hearing, it's, it, and it's beyond actually the instrumentality. For example, we can't see x-rays, but we have machines, instruments that can detect x-rays. But transcendental, used in philosophy and religion, means that which transcends senses and physical instrumentation. Cosmological. Cosmological, it means the study of the cosmos or universe, how this universe works. Teleological. Teleological. Teleological, teleological from the word telos, meaning fi final purpose end. Teleological means the design of this universe, how this universe is, is purposed and how it's been designed, and part of that is its eventual culmination and purpose, yeah. Platonic. Platonic. Platonic can be used two ways. In popular speech, platonic can mean like platonic love, which is uh, love or affection or friendship that isn't physical, that is not physical. But in a more philosophical sense, platonic or platonic realism or platonic idealism is the idea that mind or spirit or thought is what is true reality. That we in the Western world, we see this earth, this planet, metal, matter, as being the true reality. But for a Platonist, it's the spiritual, it's the mental, it's the um, uh, consciousness, spirit or mind or psyche, that is the true ultimate reality. Describe the place called the Disputa. The, oh, oh, okay, the Disputa. I, I, uh, um, there is a, I wish I knew more about that, I don't know that much about it right now, but there, the, the Disputa in the Vatican, there is a uh, kind of an anteroom or library type room that Raphael, uh, about 1500 I think it is, he did uh, two very beautiful frescoes. On one wall, is the school of Athens and what you see there is this great pillars and palace and roof and steps and at the center of the two steps in the center of the fresco you have Plato as an older man and he's pointing upward like this pointing to the true realities are in the heavenlies the spiritual realm the mental realm the noumena Whereas Aristotle is a younger man, browner beard, not the white, but he's going like this because Aristotle, yes, he said there were the forms but, or the universal principles, but they were embedded in the things themselves. There was not some platonic realm of the good where these ideal forms existed over and above this physical reality. No, he's going like this, the physical reality is here. So that's the school of Athens and flanking Aristotle and Plato are all these other great philosophers and mathematicians, for example, of, of the ancient world. Very beautiful painting by Raphael. Opposite that is a depiction of this two-tiered reality that we live in. Up above you have in the heavenly or mental realm, spiritual realm. Down below you have the physical realm. And up above you have uh, the Godhead, uh, the Father and the Son, I believe. It's been a while since I've seen the painting. But you have God there and you have the angels and some of the saints, departed saints and things. And they're talking about this sacrifice of God himself, which is known as the Eucharist or the Communion or the Lord's Supper, that God died and gave of his essence, gave of his body and gave of his blood that we can have existence. That's the top aspect of the fresco. Down below is, I believe, some priests at an altar and there is the monstrance in the cup showing the elements and uh, to explain what the elements and the substance and the, the things are of the Eucharist. We'll have a future program on that. But the concept of this substance, the underlying substance of everything and how it's transformed into the body and blood of God, uh, that goes to Aristotelian thought and, and we'll deal with that. But so up above you have in the heavenly level, down below you have the physical level, and they're talking about the meaning 
of the Eucharist or the communion or uh, the Lord's Supper? In what way does God die to himself? Does he die to his creation? Has he taken on material form? Has he taken on flesh in order that we can have life and have eternal life? Jesus says, whenever you partake of this, remember me. And this is my body, this is my blood. And of course, Roman Catholicism and many of your Protestants view this whole thing of the Eucharist or consubstantiation that the, tran the substance actually transforms or some say uh, consubstantiation that along with the substance, con, with the substance, is the spirit of Christ. Um, and then some just say it's a commemoration. But uh, we will examine some of those ideas. And um, so that's a little bit about what this disputo at the Vatican is, but there's also the other form of disputo, and I want to make sure I got the term right, disputato. Um, the disputato is a term in scholasticism having to do with the question and answering of a theological question. That's the disputat disputatio. Okay. Yeah.